NASA is just hours away from hopefully landing its most advanced robot ever sent into space on the surface of Mars. The Perseverance rover is on a mission to find signs of life on the red planet, but half of previous Mars landings have ended in disaster. Gio Benitez has more on what we can expect today. Are we alone? Are we the only ones? I think we're just fundamentally curious about our place in the cosmos. We've been thinking about the possibility of life on other planets for hundreds of years now. And this is our first opportunity to perhaps find it. Engine ignition, two, one, and liftoff. That is the incredible mission of Mars 2020, to determine if life exists or has ever existed on another planet. Three and a half billion years ago, when life was just getting a toehold here on Earth, Mars was wet and warm and very similar environment to that which Earth has. So there's a possibility that early Mars was habitable for life and that life could have also started on the red planet. To answer that question, NASA scientists have created the most advanced robot ever sent into space. Perseverance has within it the most complex, sophisticated robotic system we've ever sent outside of Earth. We're landing the heaviest payload that we've ever landed. Perseverance rover is roughly the size of a car. It's about 10 feet long. She is the biggest rover, the heaviest rover. She has got packed with firsts from the bottom to the top. It's part of a mission that has been more than eight years in the making, with a price tag of $2.7 billion. Its destination, an ancient dried up lake called Jezero, three and a half billion years old. Based on everything we know about that environment, it was habitable. Life should have been there. So I think we are very optimistic, I'm very optimistic, that we will find signs of ancient life there if they ever existed on Mars. There's no reason why they shouldn't be there. Don't expect them to find creatures like we've seen in movies like Mars Attacks. Martians. <laughs> Funny looking little critters, ain't they? What they hope is to find something much simpler, ancient evidence of tiny microbe-sized life. But none of this will happen until the rover is safely on the planet. Space is hard. When I started this work, over 65% of all the missions that went to Mars had failed, had ended in disaster. It's so difficult that only one country has been successful in landing a rover so far, and that's the United States. Looking forward, this NASA mission is the first of three, part of a plan called Mars Sample Return that will ultimately retrieve rock samples Perseverance gathered from Jezero Crater and bring them back to Earth, hopefully as definitive proof of extraterrestrial life. If we can find evidence of life on Mars, then we're gonna realize that we're a bigger part of the life story. It's not just an Earth story, it's a universe story. I hope that happens, that would be a super exciting um, a thing to see. There's a lot of things that have to happen in order to pull this off. Whether or not we can do it, absolutely yes. Is it easy? Absolutely not. Will it happen? I don't know, I hope so. And once we prove that, new questions arise. Not are we alone, but now what or who is out there? The images in this video are all real photographs taken by NASA's Curiosity rover. In this video, we will climb a Martian mountain. So sit back, relax, and imagine what it might be like to step foot on Mars, courtesy of the Curiosity rover. The places that NASA has explored have all been given names, which you will see on screen in the bottom left corner. Landing in 2012, the mission was only supposed to last for two years, yet due to the great success of the rover, it was extended indefinitely. At the start of 2020, the Curiosity rover has been exploring Mars for almost eight years. Pictures are regularly beamed back to Earth for scientists to study. 
This image shows the effects of roaming Mars for eight years, covered in Martian dust but still determined to carry on. After a risky flight, Curiosity safely lands in the Gale Crater, an ancient impact site thought to have been filled with water and sediment in the past. Over time, the strong winds have carved away the sediment and left a three-mile-high mountain known as Mount Sharp. NASA now has a big challenge to find a way to get Curiosity up the mountain. Using data from orbiting spacecraft and combining it with pictures from Curiosity, the team puts together a 3D map of the terrain. Each path up Mount Sharp is risky, but scientists finally agree on a route. This path will take Curiosity past some sites of interest on its way up. First stop, Yellowknife Bay. The area here looks to be made up of sedimentary deposits. The science team concludes that this crater was once home to a large amount of water. This is Curiosity's first major finding. Curiosity now turns its focus towards Mount Sharp, beginning its two-year-long journey towards the Pahrump Hills at the mountain's base. Passing a site named the Kimberley Formation, Curiosity stops to take some pictures. Again, the sediments found here confirm the crater was once a watery place. Curiosity also passed a site named Garden City, an outcrop with huge mineral veins winding across the surface. Curiosity studied these veins, sending valuable data back to Earth for geologists to scrutinize. Curiosity stops to take a picture of the Martian sunset, which is actually blue on Mars, unlike the red sunsets we see here on Earth. Scientists believe this is due to the fine particles in Mars' atmosphere, which permit more blue light than here on Earth. This image of what is known as whale rock shows an example of cross-bedding. That results from water passing over a loose bed of sediment. As Curiosity says goodbye to the Pahrump Hills, it heads towards one of the most interesting regions so far, the Bagnold Dunes. This dune, named Namib Dune, stands at about 13 feet. The Bagnold Dunes were the first dunes ever to be examined up close on another world. NASA took great care when crossing the dunes as to avoid the fate of another previous rover, Spirit, which became trapped in a sand dune during its journey. The chosen path up Mount Sharp will take Curiosity out of the Bagnold Dunes, crossing through the now Kloofed Plateau into a territory called Murray Buttes, before traversing back into the Bagnold Dunes. Now Kloofed Plateau, the entrance to Murray Buttes, is marked by two tall sediment structures, which Curiosity will have to pass through. This image was also taken on the fourth anniversary of Curiosity's landing, or its fourth birthday. The team at NASA had Curiosity sing happy birthday to itself. Curiosity studied these structures up close while passing. This one, named the Stimson Formation, is an ancient remnant of eroded sandstone that originated when winds deposited sands, after Lower Mount Sharp had formed. This layering within the sandstone is called cross-bedding, and indicates that the sandstone was deposited by wind as sand dunes migrated. As Curiosity waves goodbye to Murray Buttes and continues the long journey up Mount Sharp, it comes across an interesting hill named Ierson Hill. 
Standing at about 16 feet, this alien-looking hill provides a great view from Mars. Crossing over more sand dunes, Curiosity comes across a region known as Ogonquit Beach. The large crests present on the dunes, combined with the smaller ripples, are not seen anywhere on Earth, making these dunes the strangest ever studied. The determined rover now heads towards its highest point yet, a ridge known as Vera Rubin Ridge. The repeated beds on the rocks indicate progressive accumulation of sediments that now make up the lower part of Mount Sharp, although from this distance it is not possible to know if they were formed by aqueous or wind-blown processes. Curiosity will have to get closer. As Curiosity climbs Vera Rubin Ridge, scientists determined that the structures here were formed due to wind erosion, and by being more resistant to the erosion than the rocks surrounding the ridge, some strange formations have been created. As Curiosity reaches the top of the ridge, the view is incredible. It shows the rover's journey so far from where we started in the Gale Crater. In the distance is the northern rim of the Gale Crater, with Mount Sharp standing at five miles high behind Curiosity. In June 2018, however, a global-scale dust storm hits Mars and damages Curiosity's fellow rover, Opportunity, which is exploring a different region of Mars far, far away. This image shows the difference in the sky over just three days from Curiosity's perspective, in one of the least affected regions of the dust storm. As the storm subsides, Curiosity turns to look uphill at Mount Sharp and spots a region of clay which could give more clues about how water helped to shape this area. Curiosity takes a selfie at a site known as Glenative. This is done using the camera on the rover's robotic arm. Fifty-seven individual images are then stitched together and the arm is digitally removed from the final image, providing a perfect view of Curiosity. As Curiosity traverses the clay-bearing unit, it comes across a site named Teal Ridge. The samples that Curiosity took in the clay-bearing unit have proved to contain the most amount of clay ever found on Mars, which signals a strong presence of water in the ancient past. At the time of making this video, Curiosity is still climbing Mount Sharp, now heading towards an area known as Western Butte. Curiosity's journey is still ongoing as of 2020, but it's not the only story of exploration on Mars. Curiosity's older sibling, Opportunity, stopped contacting NASA in 2018 after sending one last spooky message. The last message NASA received from Opportunity was, My battery is low and it's getting dark. <laughs>